This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high-growth companies meet. Nanovibronics Proprietary Technology is addressing some of the biggest problems in healthcare today. To tell us more, here is the company's CEO, Brian Murphy. Thank you, Galit, and thank you, Scott, and the Richmond Club for uh, allowing me this time in front of you. Um, my name is Brian Murphy. I'm the CEO of Nanovibronics. We're a NASDAQ-traded uh, company under the symbol NAOV. Um, made it up to NASDAQ about, uh, about two years ago, and it's um, been an interesting ride. I joined the company a couple of years ago, and really because I saw a platform technology that uh, was expandable, it was uh, valuable, patented, and had a uh, uh, played in market marketplaces that were extremely large, and needed some answers. So uh, I took the uh, company over a couple of years ago, and after getting to Nasdaq, we raised enough money, we broke the company down basically, and rebuilt it back up with just a, a number of different changes that we made to the company including um, automating the company, brand new products, uh, new um, design of the products. And one of the big issues was we had very, very limited production capabilities. We just shifted that production capability over to China and, um, and have increased our capacity dramatically. A number of other things have occurred. I'm gonna take you through those, but first, what I'd like to do is, is just kind of explain who the company is and what the platform technology is. The, um, the entire company, Nanovibronics, is built around one platform technology. It's called Surface Acoustic Wave. Many of you have heard about ultrasound, heard of ultrasound. Um, a lot of people consider you know, what they've heard from more of a diagnostic standpoint, but it has a treatment element as well. Uh, we have a patented low-level, low-frequency ultrasound that's applied in, uh, in all of our products. So three, three primary products are Euroshield, Pain Shield, and Wound Shield. Now, <clears throat> if you consider ultrasound, and when it's applied, if you kind of look at a fork in the road, on one side, when ultrasound is applied directly to the skin, it actually is an anti-inflammatory it's a soft tissue repair. It increases blood flow, increases oxygenation. It's angiogenic, um, increasing the vascular bed, increases collagen production, fibroblast recruitment, a number of things that are required in soft tissue repair. And when it's incorporated into a pain device, you're actually treating what's causing the pain instead of just masking the pain. On the other side of it, when you apply uh, low-level, low-frequency ultrasound or surface acoustic wave to a hard surface like a catheter, basically what it does is it travels down the catheter and creates like a trampoline effect on the catheter and it, it doesn't allow bacteria to uh, adhere to the catheter. Huge issue in uh, the healthcare marketplace today. So um, a little bit about Euroshield. This is really our home run product. Uh, Euroshield is a, um, a device that is an external clamp-on device, and you can see where it clamps onto the external portion of the, the catheter, uh, doesn't even come into contact with the patient. The device sends an ultrasonic wave down the catheter, and it creates like this trampoline effect. It, um, uh, what normally happens with a catheter is it's a perfect breeding ground, it's a perfect uh, environment to create a colony, that's where bacteria form and create a, uh, uh, more of a party, and then um, around to protect the colony, eventually it forms a biofilm. And a biofilm is like a Teflon coating where it doesn't allow antibiotics to penetrate. What this does is it actually creates an environment where bacteria can't adhere, can't create a colony, can't create a biofilm, and actually now you've got free-floating bacteria that's more easily targeted by antibiotics. The, um, this kind of shows you a little bit about what it does. It actually creates this signal and it just travels down actually into the bladder as well. So everything is built around data. 
right? I mean, no products, no medical products are sold without data being generated. And it's got to be obviously positive data and the studies have to be done in the right way. There were five um, what I'll call proof of concept studies. The proof of concept studies are, uh, they were, uh, it covered 139 patients, but basically it proved five things. It proved that it prevented uh, urinary tract infection, prevented colonization, prevented um, uh, biofilm formation, prevented pain, and it also proved in, in an in vitro environment that it increased the efficacy of the antibiotic. Now, I don't know if anybody's had a family member or who has had a urinary tract infection, but they're really, really difficult to treat. So not only can we prevent it, but we can also help treat it more effectively. So um, our biggest study was done in upstate New York, 55 patients. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole detail, but bottom line is that um, at the end of the study, which was a 90-day study, uh, there was a 30-day treatment period where 27% of the controlled, you know, non-Euroshield non group, at the end of 30 days, 27% of those patients had contracted a UTI and zero on the Euroshield side. Then they removed the, the therapy, but they continued to follow those patients. And what they found was that uh, even after they removed the therapy, that the bacteria was so disorganized and um, they couldn't actually form a colony very effectively. So the rate of UTI on the control side went up to 54% and on the therapeutic side went just a little over 10%. So um, it was actually effective even beyond the treatment period. Uh, we had uh, multiple in vitro studies that were done, primarily in accordance to what the, VA, or the, uh, the FDA had uh, asked us to accomplish. So now pain shield. Um, pain shield is a, an external, non-chemical, you know, the, the rage right now is about opioids and having an alternative to opioids. <clears throat> so there are very few alternatives to opioids. Um, pain shield is an alternative. And basically the reason it's an, it's an alternative is it's a long-term treatment plan. It's a longer term solution. So many of you are familiar with TENS devices. A TENS device and the pain shield could not be further apart. A TENS device, which is um, Dr. Ho, I believe is up here. So everybody's heard of Dr. Ho. I keep hearing about this, this iconic figure. What a TENS device does, that's his device. It sends a lot of electronic signals to the brain to confuse the brain as to where the pain is coming from. Okay, now what we do is completely different. Now, by, by the way, there is no therapeutic benefit to that at all. What we do is we actually attack what's causing the pain whether it's muscle, tendon, or nerve. And the way we do this is through the mechanisms of action that encourage soft tissue repair. So if you had to look at it just in a very simplistic way, TENS devices, which really dominate the market because of their, their cost, but they really don't do anything other than uh, 40 to 50% of the patients will actually feel relief, but it's temporary. And the minute you take it off, that effect is gone. On our side, we're actually a long-term solution. Um, that's what the device looks like. There's a uh, controller device that's reusable. And then uh, there's a daily patch that adheres the, um, the transducer to the skin. The treatment area, by the way, is about 20 centimeters in diameter and about four to six centimeters deep. It's extremely effective. A um, couple of studies that I just wanted to point out. There are a number of studies that are on our website, which uh, you can go to nanobiobronics.com. Uh, we just finished a study 
that address the problem that uh, doesn't really have any answers, and that's uh, lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. I don't know, has anybody ever had tennis elbow? It's horrendous, isn't it? So um, what I can tell you is that we reported initial results of 73%. That was an interim press release that I put out. The results are better than that. And I can't tell you what the results are, primarily because we're submitting for, uh, for publication. But the bottom line is that um, you know, this is a sports, you know, an active sports uh, nightmare when you've got it. And we may have the only solution to uh, lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. There's something else that um, when I walked into the company, they were doing this study called uh, on trigeminal neuralgia, which is a facial nerve pain. It's also called the suicide pain. Now, the reason I, I went along with that study is because we figured that if we could prove to be effective on uh, trigeminal neuralgia, the suicide pain, where nothing else works other than opioids or something called CyberKnife, then everything else should be a walk in the park. And so it was the third study that was done on, uh, on trigeminal neuralgia. And it showed uh, in the first two studies 73% effectiveness. And then uh, in the, the bigger study at the end, it was right around the same results. But what we did was we actually cut down their use of opioids. So that was an important factor. Um, the wound shield, I won't really talk too much about that. Uh, it is a product that um, utilizes the same platform technology. Um, pipeline, uh, we've got an aesthetic device that we're uh, in it, discussions with some major cosmetics companies, but it actually revitalizes skin, so it's kind of like a permanent Botox. And then CBD, um, we're in the process of launching CBD in, in Canada. Um, some of the FDA initiatives we're, we're about to submit on the Euro Shield and on the Pain Shield. Uh, that should be hopefully coming up in the next couple of months. Um, ongoing research, we are committed to research. I believe that the only way that you can commercialize a product is through data and actually prove it um, through clinical studies. <clears throat> so we've got a whole list of, uh, of accomplishments that have occurred over the last couple of years. Um, like I said, after we raised the money to get to NASDAQ, I had to basically rip the company apart and put it back together again. And um, everything from the product design and production and the cost of the products and everything else. But there's been two things that have occurred in the last uh, four months that really are gonna transform the company. And I'll explain uh, if I've got one minute more. <clears throat> number one is we were granted something called an FSS number. Federal supply schedule is what allows you to sell into the Veterans Administration hospitals in the United States. Veterans VA hospitals in the US have an active program to reduce the amount of opioids. We were fast-tracked through this program through what's called an SDVO, Service Disabled Veteran Organization, that now allows us to sell into the VA. Now, uh, the second thing that occurred, occurred just after that, and that is we were granted a dedicated Medicare reimbursement code for the product, dedicated directly to the product itself. While it doesn't have a value yet, a reimbursement value, uh, that will be assigned in April. So what those two things did was it opened the door to negotiate for private label arrangements, strategic partnerships that basically um, have a, a large footprint in specific markets like the VA. For instance, we've got a, uh, negotiation, uh, negotiations going on right now with a company that's got 250 salespeople. We'll never have 250 salespeople. <coughs> But they're interested in private labeling our product to put into their sales organization. And it's, um, if it, if it uh, comes to fruition, it's a huge benefit. So we've got a number of different discussions going on on the private label side that uh, will 
basically changed the, the uh, look of the company through 2020. So a number of catalysts, uh, but basically uh, we're all interested in revenue and the revenue is gonna come from these private label uh, OEM uh, um, manufacturing relationships or strategic relationships. Um, we believe it's undervalued right now, especially because of everything that's occurred over the last year. Uh, and I think it's a really, really good opportunity to buy at this point. So, um, just to end it, my experience has been that I've been uh, on the commercialization side, my chairman of the board, he and I joined together. Uh, we've worked together for 24 years and actually commercialized many, many medical products out there. So, this is right in our, our, uh, uh, our wheelhouse. So, uh, again, I thank you guys. And thank you for listening to me. If you've got any questions, first of all, go to nanobiobronics.com uh, to learn more. But also, uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to call me. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and lucrative investment and trading ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.